And we're live. Hi, Ben. What's up? How That's are you? Guys. Happy uh, Happy Monday on a. Uh, I can't believe it's August already. That's kind of how I'm feeling. It's been. Uh, if you had told me that I would be here quarantine still, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, well, you're crazy. You're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. It's like Groundhog Day. It's one long day. It's like you just do the same thing over and over. It's starting to feel a little repetitive. But well, you know, it, it, yeah, it definitely is repetitive. I, I agree. <laughs> it, um, but it's been, I don't know. I, I think it's been, I don't know. We were talking about this, I think, a while back, but I've been appreciating some things that I hadn't before. I think it's put some things in a perspective for, for sure. For sure. And, uh, I don't know. I, I, I hope, you know, obviously, given the circumstance, some, some good is coming of it at the end. That's, that's my optimism talking at least. Yes. Uh, Light at the end of the tunnel. And we'll, we'll, <laughs> boom! Translate right to today. Monday, yeah. I really can't complain. I'm pretty stoked for uh, what's ahead, and if it does feel like we, it's been a while since we've done this. I know it's only been a couple of weeks, but I feel like it's been. I don't know. It feels like a long time. It does feel like a long time, and today's actually really exciting because not only are we going to be tasting through six whiskeys, we are going to be sharing the entire outturn. We've not done this before, so. Yeah, but- we have not done that before. And I, I know, look, guys, I mean, so many of you have, have asked just when we, when Jen and I are t- talking about the whiskeys, we're tasting them before they come out. Um, obviously, it's always, always just been a small selection of the whole out turn. And just at, based on feedback from our members, just saying, hey, look, what else is coming out? We just figured, why the hell not? We'll just go ahead and what, what, what we'll do today is we're going to taste through this. What do we have? Six, six in total six. to taste through. And then at the end, we'll go ahead and we'll post just here, uh, you know, share the screen with with the whole list so you guys are really the first ones to, to see it all before it comes out tomorrow at one o'clock yeah so we have a pretty pretty stacked cast here today too i see some familiar faces tom's here hello tom tom R. And first in the chat as, as always as always and karen she's like i feel like you know she's like a loyalist just she's so loyal to us and always here so we really appreciate that and yeah we gotta get we got karen we gotta get you on the stream one time or tom right yeah anybody, we're, uh, we're, we're starting to, uh, oh, I see Mark here says behave Tom. Yes, Tom, listen to Mark Broda. <laughs> um, no, we're, we're, we're in this for the long haul with YouTube and, and in it live on Facebook right now too. And so everybody's been asking for more and more content and, uh, look, if you guys want to get involved, shoot us a message anytime. Yeah. That'd be fun. So we have Brian in Seattle. Hello, Brian. It's been a while since I've seen Brian. I don't think the last time was in 2018 when I was up in Seattle. So it's been some time since I've been able to see anyone. I miss people. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about, Ben and I were actually talking about the Pacific Northwest today because I just think it's such a beautiful part of the country. And we're actually talking about the Seattle hockey team, the the Kraken, which I don't know, I'm a <laughs> fan. And so that was, that was a big talk of, you know, a few hours back with Zach as well. Um, I, I love the city and we, man, we just have, we have so many members out there now. And yeah. so I was really into the idea of just continuing to go out there as long as I can, but I don't know. I'm stuck here. <laughs> soon enough. Soon enough. We'll be back out on the road. So, all right. I'm ready for whiskey. I don't know You're about you. Whiskey. Yes. It's been a Monday, Monday and this, I, I've been waiting for this. So. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm stoked. I mean, I just just reminding you guys. So tomorrow is is the release of our August outturn, as you obviously know from the, the description below and the title of the, of the stream here. But um, <laughs> we're releasing what? I have to look at the final number. It's around 20, 20 or so, right? 20, 20 into, is that right? And um, you know, obviously the whiskeys are available to society members exclusively, and yeah, our whiskey's not available in store shelves or or anywhere other than sort of our online shop and as well as over the phone. But uh, if you're not a member, of course, we'd love to have you join join us. But this is a cool selection because I think we were talking about earlier that you know every month has a different theme. And I think Jenna, you were big on this in years past. Like getting the idea of getting outside is yes. is always great. And so the theme this month is just the fact that a lot of us have been locked down for a long time. It's really about embracing the outdoors, getting outside, and really kind of pairing different whiskeys with just outdoor activities, socially distant and responsible, of course, but, but the idea is, is really finding whiskeys that are really great with personality and great for the outdoors. And I just, Jenna, I called you up because well, you're the only person here, but uh, you're big on camping with whiskey. We talked about yes. that in the past and like, you have a whole, do you, 
okay, it's not to put you in the spot. This is not a rehearse or anything, but do you have a, like a, we're talking about outdoors and whiskey. Do you have sort of a, a guideline or a blueprint rather for kind of your, what you'd like to drink outdoors or taste outdoors? Um, it really depends. Like if it's a really hot day, then, you know, I want something that I can maybe have in like a highball, um, typically something peated, peated highballs are my favorite. So, um, and when we camp, we always take something smoky or peaty, um, to enjoy by the fire. So that's, that's always kind of like a must is taking something like that. But, um, I typically don't do like big sherry bombs or anything like that when I'm outside. That's more of like an inside, like, that's like an intimate whiskey and uh you know the the big kind of big juicy bourbon cask i really enjoy you know outside and of course that smoky peatiness so when you're by campfire can't really beat it so i think we have a little bit of all of that but anyway so let, let's go to the list we'll, we'll we'll go through all six you know we'll taste them and and have you tasted any of these before this is my first time Mine too. okay i literally just uncorked and all well, these samples rather unscrew cap these samples and poured them so we'll go through all of them and uh then share the, the full list at the end <laughs> so sure guys so what do we yeah what do we got first well look at this color first one this is pretty a pretty it's, dark start yeah this is typically we don't start with something you know that is this kind of like vibrant in the glass it's more of that those lighter hay type of uh colors so i'm stoked for this one all right so first up is going to be mediterranean moleskin which is cask 63.62 and this is a seven year space side from a second fill x oloroso butt in our young and sprightly flavor profile so i'm always excited when i see this pink strip on a bottle um but this comes in at 65.9 percent so we're really kind of awakening our palate <laughs> with a, a bold one to, to start off. So there's like, there she is. Yeah, and just, you know, it's interesting because this is an American oak Oloroso bud and a lot of you guys might be thinking, well, what, we don't see a lot of those often. I, the, the truth is that when it comes to making Oloroso sherry or any sherry, most of sherry is made in American oak. And usually if it's European oak, it's been seasoned with sherry for specifically for Scotch whiskey maturation. So we tend to acquire different casks, you know, from Spain, just for our own double maturation purposes. So we do see some true bodega, bodega casks with American oak, but I don't know. I don't. I haven't seen one like this seven years full term in American oak Oloroso for a long time. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't know if I've ever had one to be honest. So this is this is pretty exciting. And sixty-five. I love these sherry, but sixty-five point nine percent. When I saw the first one, I was like, oh my goodness, that's that's one way to you know, kickstart a, a Monday afternoon. I'm getting like big, almost like butterscotch. Not like butterscotch, like the little yellow, like Werther's, like a creamy, it's like a creamier, like brown sugar butterscotch on the nose on this. Yeah, you know, I'm still nosing and I, I get, it, unmistakably Oloroso sherry and then it's dark, it's spicy, it's got a lot of like sort of nutmeg and very like a herbal note, like yeah. a little bit of clove and it's nutty. That's and it's interesting call. that he's young and sprightly, which is, uh, we don't see a lot of sherry casts in that profile. It's usually oh. deep, rich and dried fruits is where the sherry casts fall in. Yeah. And this is just, I'm like, oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, this is, this is a really vibrant nose. <laughs> Oh, it's so strong. So, okay, I, I will just go out on a limb and say that. that is really, really strong. You can see my eyes watering. Um, Ooh. I mean, clip nearly 66%. There's, I mean, that's. You can call me on unbrave, but I, I feel like I got to add some water to this one. I'm actually going to add water to this as well. I mean, that is intense. That's like fire breathing. Yeah, but it, then it's it, not. But then, like, it it really mellows out on the finish. And, like, you get a lot of flavor coming through. A lot of those, like, really nice, like, rich, nutty flavors, like, totally just blanket your palate after that, like, initial, like, you know, shock has burned off. So that's really nice. 
Bill says, keep away from a campfire. I'm, okay. we, we need to, uh, well, let's try to let's make a challenge ourselves to, with each whiskey tie in an outdoor sort of activity. All right. I mean, can do it. The theme, guys. I mean, I hope you all enjoy the outdoor theme because I think it's really, I don't know, here I am at home. I'm really looking to get outdoors. I'm trying to think of what, what is your ideal for an outdoor setting for this one? Um, This one would be, I don't know, like in the country somewhere. Like <laughs> where I don't have neighbors and I'm just like in the middle of a giant field and the wind's blowing and I'm on my porch in a swing. I don't know. My dog next to me. This is definitely a nighttime, like summer. I mean, you you were talking yeah. about 120 degrees in LA, right? Or something like that. It's like, yeah, it's really hot. Yeah, it's tough to find a whiskey for that. But <laughs> this, is like a, this is really rich. It's really yeah. it's just so wild and raw. I'm like at almost 66%. It's got to be a nighttime sort of post dessert. Yeah. Probably not your first whiskey of the day. I mean, it is for no. us, but um, <laughs> I think outdoors on the front porch at night is kind of my, uh, is my, not much of an activity, just sort of hanging out. Yeah. Like this is good conversation whiskey. Like you're hanging out, just having good conversation or like deeper conversation. This is a good whiskey for that. And I feel like with water, the nose on this is just so beautiful with water. Yeah, I had a little, oh it's my. Just, I love how it just reduces strength a little bit. Yeah. It really brings out sort of the, the, the fruity notes. Like really a lot of, I get more berries and. Like cherry I, and. And cherry. Yeah. I got a ton of cinnamon. Like this heavy, heavy baking spice on this one. Yeah, that is that is gorgeous on the nose. Wow. Daniel Duggar's in the house. Hi, Daniel. He says, hi, guys. Good to see you. Bill uh, says, it's like standing on the famous bridge in Ronda, Spain. Oh. I mean, it's hard not to think of Spain when you have this sherry, full-term sherry cask, you know. We were just talking about Spain and how much we miss it. I know. Oh. It's, uh, I have to even add some more water to this one. Honestly, I don't know if I've ever said this. So this is the first, but I prefer this with a good little, you know, drop of water in this. Like it really opens up with some water. Like this is probably one of the, f really the few whiskeys I've had where, you know, it, really just amplifies it but in like a really different way not it's not like aggressive that just the water brings out so many really nice flavors in this this is really good yeah oftentimes you know, when we think of sherry cask sherry cask matured whiskey we think of sort of very deep rich sort of yeah. i dare say the word but i think it's like a luxurious sort of tasting experience but i i love this because it's so raw and it's so atypical of what you would experience in the, in the sherry that you're style. Exactly. You know, it's sort of more of a just here I am naked type of, I, I, I don't know <laughs> where I'm going with this. 55.9% of it has really already hit me, but um, it's just a very, very pure and, and unrefined, but just so powerful. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but the, the flavor in it, especially with the water is there is an elegance to it, which is so crazy, you know, for something kind of young and just really, you know, big on the palate, there is like this elegance of flavor that comes through and it's really beautiful. Yeah, question from Elhan. Good to see Elhan. He says, any thoughts as on what the reason was not to give it this drum a bit more time in the cask to get more sherry from the second fill? I think, I mean, for me, I, I think experiencing this style, like we just talked about how atypical it is for sherry matured whiskey. And I think that's kind of what we're always going for. We're looking for things that are unique and not very common. Um, and so, yeah, I think it could have gone more in the cask and become more of what we would expect from a sherry matured whiskey. But I, I think on its own as is, it has so much personality. It's so vibrant. I think it's a, it's a fantastic in its own way, you know, at a young age. Yeah, I've never experienced anything like this. So this is very new for me. And I love that it is young and, you know, fully in, a, in this, this Eccler So I think it's an experience of a whiskey. And um, yeah, I wouldn't change it. All right, what have we got next? All right, let's, 
keep going. All right, so number two is in our juicy oak and vanilla flavor profile. And this is cask 94.8 from Cornwall to Madagascar. And this is an eight year Highland in a second fill X bourbon barrel at 62.4 per percent ABV. <laughs> Guys, 65.9 in the first one. I know, got me, whew. Dropping bottles here. So another young gun, yeah. they're kind of bright, different, different. I, and I, I've talked about this at the best. I love the juicy oven vanilla. I just feel like there's so much going on in these, you know, for what you get, even a, especially at a young age, they're just, they offer so much. I feel like that was a little biased, of course, but I, this is, I mean, I, I don't want to make that a secret. I love the juicy oven vanillas. I think we all kind of gravitate towards certain flavor profiles. Yeah, this is, I'm trying to think what that is that it reminds me of. It's a bit malty for me. Like, it, and there's like a nice note of freshly baked bread. Like I, I get a lot of baked goods ahead of more fruit, but there's all, I mean, I'm picking up some, some bourbon qualities. Yeah, for sure. Barrel. Like it has a little bit of that, um, I don't know, like a, I think of like a dusty rickhouse floor yeah. that, I, that I get and almost, I don't want to call it corn, but it, it, there are some bourbon-like qualities likely extracted from the bourbon cask it was matured in. Yeah, I would say like when you smell those like really young bourbons, but it's not sweet. Like the nose isn't, I'm not getting like a lot of sweetness like you would from like, you know, the corn from a bourbon. I'm not getting that sweetness, but I'm definitely getting that young bourbon feel. There's something else in there. I can't quite dig it out. It's really well balanced, I think, between the bourbon cast, like the wood itself and the spirit. You know, I think generally in the juicy oak and we see a lot of first fill barrels and really the, the bourbon cast will be the dominant sort of influencer of the profile. This is, I think, a really nice balance between sort of the multi spirit beneath it. You know, so there's a lot, it's it's very subtle, I would say, all, yeah. all, the, all the sort of complexities. I'm almost getting like green olive juice. Hmm. Yeah, like a green olive. This is... Hmm. It has... Okay, so this is, we're talking about our outdoor sort of settings for each whiskey. This is like a big rolling field. You're out in the hills somewhere, yeah. like about to do a hike. You know, like at the beginning of a hike where you're just sort of going pretty much low altitude. They're just rolling hills before the climb. I don't know if there are any, this is, am I out of my mind here, but. No, it tastes like you're explaining. Yeah. Yeah. It's got, it's just this big highland sort of rolling plains feel to it. Like it's a classic Highland whiskey as I would describe it. Yeah, there's like a dry grass element. Yeah, yeah. That I'm getting, you know, like the smell of like grass, like summer grass that's been baked by the sun. Like that, <laughs> that, 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 like smell is what it tastes like. By the way, I'm trying. I'm using this thing now. Just I'm getting real fancy with it. Ooh. I uh, because I have my jug at the office, so. I'm quarantining for a, a couple of weeks and maybe arrival anticipation just to be safe. And it's, uh, I'm for realizing I have all my whiskey accessories are at the office. <laughs> you can, you have to use a straw, the Zach method. That is, that is a great, that is a great method. Yes. Yeah. I, I love, I love the classical Highland notes. I love the, I, I get some of the grass, a bit of like, like a bit of melon rind, if that makes sense. There's a little sort of, it's not an off note, but it's a little tart almost. Mm -hmm. Maybe that, maybe that tart is not the word to describe, like the inner lining of a melon. Mm. There's a bit of an acidity. Yeah, I can see that. Like an unripened mm -hmm. melon rind. Mm -hmm. Like when you cut into like a cantaloupe or a honeydew and it's not ripe enough yet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I could see that. I haven't done that in a while, but yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking mm -hmm. of. That's interesting. I've got to do a palate cleanse here. I think it's bright and intense. And again, it's not for juicy oak and vanilla. Both of these have been sort of on the cusp of their profiles. 
You know, I think the first one, oh man, I'm talking, it's still, it's still going. It's so, it's so, it's so, it's so aggressive too. Yeah. But, you know what I mean? It's like, this is more, I think, in between sort of a young and sprightly and juicy oak and vanilla. Like it, it's pretty spirit driven, you know, it's not very so cast down and it's very well balanced. Yes, I, I agree. Like that. I feel like I get more of the juicy oak and vanilla on the nose than I do on the palate. I agree. Yeah. I, did, I yeah, feel like. Spot on. Yeah. I get that too. So, yeah, that's like a hybrid flavor profile whiskey. A young and juicy oak okay. and vanilla. Yeah. Where are we going next? Next. I'm cruising through these. Um, all right. So the next one, actually, before we move on, I kind of, you know, I'm like a fan of those fun facts about whiskey and, um, the particular, the, the whiskey that we just tasted. So that particular distillery is actually really interesting because the gentleman who like family owned it, like back in the late 1800s, he was the son or he was like the prime minister, um, uh, the British prime minister for four terms. And he was one of the gentlemen who helped pass the legislation of having whiskey bottled in glass bottles or like having whiskey be able to sold in glass bottles. And I thought that was really interesting that, you know, kind of have him to thank for having these beautiful glass bottles. So, you know, fun fact I'm, for I'm the pro, day. I'm pro glass. Yeah. So, all right, now we can move on. <laughs> all right, so the next one is, Cask 71.71, and this is another young one at seven years. Uh, this is a space side from a first fill ex bourbon barrel at 61.8%, and this is called Hugging a Hedgerow. This is, oh, it's so different. So, another young one, yeah, we've had a few yeah. young ones in a row, and, and but this is so different. It's so, this is so fruity and floral. Oh, this is an, and this is the spicy and sweet flavor profile, too. It is. Wow, I would love to do, I would, it would be fun to do all these blind because this is floral, fruity. Oh. It's so different, right? Yeah, this is. I mean, I haven't even tasted it yet. I think it's, they just say that I'm not much of a gardener, but if I <laughs> threw an outdoor activity for this whiskey, it would be planting flowers. Garden. I mean, they're just outside Garden. in the summer, Gard gardening. Garden, yeah. Yeah. Gard the gardener's dram. Gardener's dram. So when you're out there planting your flowers and tomatoes and your basil, which I'm kind of getting that in this whiskey. I'm kind of getting like a basil note on the nose on this. Am I crazy? I don't know, but NY Rich 56 says, I wonder if Jenna will have any Oh Wow bottles this month. I like how the old man has evolved into the oh wow. And I, I think, I think I love this, you know. We were to have a rating system on the website. This Fine. one is five oh mans and, and three oh wow. wows. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give this nose, I'll give this nose four out of five oh wows. I mean, I, there's, there's a lot going on. And I really, yeah. It, it, the room is so much more. I mean, seven years old, it's so much more developed than, than you would expect. Yeah, I would not guess on the nose that this is as young as it is. Like just in smelling this, I don't feel like it's, it doesn't smell super young. Can I line this up? <laughs> I wanted to show the color, but then I was like, can I line it up? <laughs> you gotta have a little fun on YouTube. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting like basil on the nose. What is this? Mm. Read these tasting notes. Oh man. Oh no, I just did it. Oh, this is this is. There's a lot of depth for oh, for seven years old. This is this is wild. The first fill barrel, that fresh that fresh cask is just is so active. You can just tell it, it's given so much character. It really sort of mellowed out the spirit. Whoa. Whoa. That is, it's super viscous. Like the, the like mouthfeel on that, the viscosity is definitely there. Whoa. What is that? 
Yeah, the, it's like a, it's a very buttery sort of profile too. I didn't get. I, didn't, I haven't gotten much of the basil. I'm getting like. I don't know. I can see the floral, like there is a little floralness on like the nose, but that palette is wild. Yeah. I'm trying to think back to the last one. I got a lot of baked bread on that one. I, this has more of a baked goods type of quality for the palate. For, for sure. Like, I'm being like buttered, salty, like French bread. You know, like it's it's really oh, hearty. With basil. <laughs> I can see that. It is very hearty. It is a very like kind of stick to your ribs kind of whiskey. Hmm. This is a breakfast dram, I think. This is a gardening in the morning. I mean, on a weekend. Come on, guys. Nobody drinks during the day at work. But, but, but no, it, it really is. It's really lively. It's really bright. It, it's it's there's like this zesty quality to it. I think that's a. I think that's a that's an oh man. And Kyle agrees. Kyle says, "Oh man, is both a great rating system and drinking game." <laughs> there is our rating system and, and tasting game. So. Yeah, this is like. It reminds me of like a blackberry basil, like some kind of blackberry and basil like cocktail or some kind of concoction of blackberry and basil. Like I'm getting those, it's so juicy. I'm getting mm -hmm. like those big kind of explosive fruits, like dark fruits, like blackberry, like almost figgy in a way. And then there's like that crisp, like clean, like basil. I don't know. That's the, that's crazy. That's really good. Yeah. I yeah. think there's, there's so much going on, like in such a small package that I just offers so much. And I, I love that about a whiskey. Yeah. There is a lot happening here. And I think this would be a really fun whiskey to like sit down and discuss with friends virtually, of course. But I think that this is one that you can really talk about and dig into and pull out just a plethora of flavors. So this is this is a good conversation piece. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Really good stuff. Okay. You ready for our next outdoor activity? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Maybe I really, we're I like, like I've dug myself in a hole with this one. Now I have to really so that was the gardener. We, we that was for yeah. gardening. Um, I'm ready, I think, to go to France. Oh, okay in like a chateau in France with the breeze and all the funky cheese I can eat and the next whiskey. Are you ready? Yeah. For funky I'm... cheese and French breezes? Come on. <laughs> all right, so the next one is going to be cask number 112.53. And this is a 15 year Highland. Um, initial cask is ex bourbon hogshead. And the final cask is a first fill limousin oak hogshead. So, so likely in that case, uh, an ex cognac cask for the, yes. the second maturation. Um, French, French oak, presumably. Yeah. Sophisticated oh, yeah. and seductive. Love the name. Yeah. 56.6% ABV. And this is in the spicy and sweet flavor profile as well. So back to back. Oh. You know, if it's a turn, likely if it's just from Zinoke, it would likely be ex cognac in this case. We, we tend to specify if it, if it is sought turn otherwise. And you sort of get that it's very, very subtle. Very it's subtle. Panic, but man, is it is this? Uh, I don't, want to say, I don't want to say the two words just yet, but. That color is really pretty. I'm not just it's, being, a, go, sorry, go ahead. No, it's, it's a very delicate nose. The nose is very delicate and oh. like very soft. It is interesting as we just sort of flew through these first three really yeah. intense whiskeys. And it's funny how uh, this is <laughs> how I think about whiskey. It just sort of slows down time. This one is really just, it's like already, I'm just catching myself. I've already paused. Like I'm breathing slower. Is that this weird? Is, am I the only one? Do you guys can't? No. Okay, somebody back me up. Can you guys back me up? You have a whiskey <laughs> that really draws you in. All of a sudden, just sort of time stands still. And I'm getting a bit of that. 
it's one of those like sit back and take a deep breath and kind of sink into where you are and you know take a little extra time Bill says he loves the France reference, but you can keep the stinky cheese. Oh, Bill, I love, I love the cheese. I do too. That's I'm right. Just eat my whole body weight in cheese <laughs> and whiskey. I'm excited to hear what you think. You know, we've had so. Oh, I don't speak. Oh, there's so much going on. There's so much there. So it's knowing that it's a it's a Highland whiskey, it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and spent most of its time in American oak, which is as most Scotch whiskeys are. It, the interplay between sort of this Scottish Highland style and then a little bit of the, sort of this French influence, but not over over the top. It's not like it's red wine or sauternes. It's no. a really bold, just this sort of ex cognac or limousin oak. Just very very softens it up. Adds some more stone fruits and a bit of pear. Like I just oh, there's so much going on. That is, so when I tasted this, it made me think of like a classic black horse cake. Like you get almost like a, a bitter oh, chocolate. I, yeah, I'm not familiar with that. Like a, a you get like a, a bitter chocolate note and then you get a really rich like fruit note, but like a like cherries and dark berries you get that kind of combination and then it's the, the mouth, the, the consistency of the viscosity on that. It's like really gooey and that is like a dessert whiskey, but it's not sweet. Like I don't find it to be sweet, but I'm getting all of those flavors of like chocolate and berries and there's like a creaminess to that. So that's why it reminds me of a cake. Yeah, it's funny. I do feel like I dug myself in a hole with the outdoor references because this one is, I don't want to be doing anything. Like I don't want to be moving when I'm tasting this whiskey. I don't want to be like hiking around, sit down. Like yeah. this requires you to sort of just pause and stand still for a moment and just sort of appreciate where you're at. So this can be sort of anywhere, but it does probably evoke later in the day, like a, like a, mm -hmm. a dusk. Sunset dram. Sunset dram. Sunset dram. For yeah. sure. Cake by the ocean. Sunset Cake. dram. Oh, man. Yeah. No, I just, That's just no man. And I don't find that the limousine oak is overpowering in any way. Like, it really does work really beautifully, you know, with that ex bourbon. You get a little bit of both. So. Yeah. I, I think this is such a wonderful balance between something that's pretty brutish underneath. Like, it's it's pretty intense. But then I, you can just kind of know that the limousine oak sort of just softened everything up a little bit. Like took yeah. the, it just sort of just, saw, you know, just rounded out the edges. And there's so much going on. I haven't even added water yet to this one. I'm going to do that. Oh, yeah. Water. Do you think whiskey has like a sweet spot year? Like, do you think there is whiskey aged? Is there like an age range that you feel like it's kind of like the magic sweet spot for whiskey? Yes and no, I guess. That's a good question. I mean, I'm curious to hear what you guys think too. Is there a sort of a, an ideal optimal age for whiskey? You know, I've always held this belief that sort of sherry matured whiskey does better older and that peated whiskey, especially Isla whiskey, tends to be better younger. But over the years, I've sort of just come to realize that I don't think there is. I mean, yeah. I think we just had a seven-year-old sherry cask whiskey that was so raw and had so much personality. And it was unlike anything, it was very atypical of what you usually find on it. And I was like, wow, this is so amazing. And then we have, you know, there's some old peated whiskeys that are just so seductive. And I'm yeah. like, well, I can't, how can I discount those? So I think it all depends. And if it's single cast, man, I mean, no two are ever alike, you know? Um, yeah, NY Rich 56 says, I think that depends on the flavor profile. Peated does better younger. And I think that is the conventional thinking. And I do agree, there's nothing like a young peated whiskey. But I think an old peated whiskey is phenomenal too, you know? I agree. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to, and I think that's what's so surprising about some of these whiskeys. And I think, you know, a few years ago, I would maybe look at a seven year whiskey and be like, uh, that's too young, you know? But then you have something, you know, like the first one we tasted or even the last one we tasted 
you know, both at seven years and it's like, it's an experience, you know, like it is a really amazing, delicious experience. And so I agree. I think, you know, for a long time, I always thought that that 15 year mark was always like kind of a, a really good, like sweet spot for whiskey. But, mm -hmm. you know, lately, you know, I'd say probably in like the past year that has kind of completely gone out the door just because I'm having so many whiskeys at, you know, various ages, both young and old that have been, you know, outstanding. Yeah. Stephen Fisher on Facebook says the sweet spot is dependent on the cask. And I, and I agree that, you know, it's, there's so many factors and you have to contribute to that. But, um, John Crutchfield said the sweet spot for whiskey is in his mouth. <laughs> Touche, sir. Well, well done, <laughs> All right, let's. So I'm excited for this next one. I, and that's go ahead, but we got yes. two more, and then we'll share the whole list. But what's uh? Let me do a quick. Tamar, I have to call it Tamar. He says, speaking as an older person, I would like to think I have become a more interesting, more interesting as I've aged. <laughs> Sorry. So this one is very exciting because we have not seen one of these in a good while. Do you want to just like put that color up there real quick before we tell everybody what it is? I mean, look at that. Yeah, I mean, it looks, uh, it's always hard to tell with like the bright lights. Like it makes it look kind of lighter than it really is. Like it's pretty. Yeah, so this one's exciting. So the next one is cask 30.109. And this is a 12 year space side in a first fill X sherry butt. And this is at 64.9% ABV. And this is called Strangely Soothing. And this is the glorious, deep, rich, and dried fruits flavor profile. I poured way too much in my glass. Yeah, there was a time a couple of years back we had a good run of these uh, Missouri 30, these Spanish oak cherry butts, you know, aging from nine to you know now 12 years. And I've always thought they were just so phenomenal. And and so I, I, yeah, some of the best representations of sherry casks. Like, so I haven't even gone into it yet, but I, I'm just really excited. Yeah, I think the last one that I remember was was it Slipper Sipper? Uh, yeah, I wanted to ten years old, maybe. I, I think I have it in here somewhere. Yeah. Uh, this is, this is a Mark Rota whiskey. If you're watching, or maybe not. It's it's a Drew Bills whiskey, but this is a uh, man. This is such a. This is. Woo. Second cherry cask of the lineup, Spanish oak this time around, and really, really much more prevalent cherry note. Big time. It's month. buttery. Yeah. Like super buttery. Whoa. Um. Sorry, just had to take them off. They, they, they just, I'll put, it, I'll put it very like plainly. There's there's nothing else I would want from a sherry bomb. Like there's just nothing else. That I started being nonchalant about it. I just it's a Monday and here we are. But but this is this is really this is like this is it, man. This is uh like yeah yeah. It's, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> well, what I just to elaborate. Like I. I the sherry is prevalent. You get all the sherry flavors, but it's not one of those whiskeys or where the, the sherry is dominating the spirit. No. It, it's it, there's like it's maintained. Put it this way: if I'm off on something today, but but if it's a uh, there's as much sherry influence as one can want before it takes over the spirit. Like it's just at the last sort of straw there. And if it were any more, it would probably be too much. But it's just right on the money as to when it was pulled. And maybe if it went a little longer, it would become really just in the cask would become too sherry forward. Yeah, this is this is full term. Clifford on Facebook asked it's it's been the full 12 years. Yeah, it's full term Spanish oak sherry, but 64.9%. And, and just, it's like leathery and oh like, yeah. like just old. Old. Too. Yeah, it tastes old, but not obviously in a bad way, but it tastes older than 12 years to me. Like it's, it's really like, this is like, where would you enjoy this outside? 
<laughs> I'm thinking of like Field of Dreams, the movie when they're like, "Are you in heaven?" No, it's Iowa. Like I, this, uh, this is like a dream in heaven. Like there's no place on this earth. Okay, that's not true. This is definitely late night. This is late night with. We talked about pairings like a couple weeks ago, but I, I like yeah. pairing cherry mature whiskey with like a chocolate. Like it's definitely dessert. But this is kind of like everybody's gone to bed. You're up with whomever, and uh, sitting. There's a the fire. Board. There's a fire. Yeah. Yeah. In LA, I don't know. Hundred twenty degrees, maybe. Maybe at night. at night. You tell me. At night, yeah. Like one a.m. Whiskey. Oh, so, so there could be a fire. Yeah, that's wow. This is very resembling of some of a similar casts from the distillery of the same cast type that we put out that a lot of society members have said is the most memorable they've had to date even, and I just think this is a, oh, yeah. This really excites me in a lot of, you know. I know you were excited about this when we saw that it was in the pipeline. Yeah, and it's not that I prefer sherry matured whiskey over or bourbon cask matured whiskey. I just, I just have seen similar casts over the years from society like this one. And they've yeah. all been real standouts, and it's just good to see another one. Yeah, it's nice to see. We haven't seen many 30s, so it's nice to see these pop back up. Um, Mark. We have around 70 bottles to in the U.S. That was the question of how many bottles. Um, I think it's about 70 in total of this one. So, very, you know, they're all very, very limited, but dropping tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern time. Tom R asked if this was like carry gold buttery and yes, like it's like, it's like oily and like, you know, like the smell of like drawn butter or melted butter, mm -hmm. the way that smells is the way, like the texture of this whiskey is like, it's super just like velvety and buttery. <laughs> All right, well, that, okay, where do we go from there? <laughs> so I guess we've lost, we're on number six now. That was, that was, I'm sorry, that was so good. That was, that was Ooh, good. All right. All right, last one. Number six. Of course, we save the peach for last. So, that's very have... popular demand. <laughs> We have Very a few heated cask, right? Coming out tomorrow. Um, yeah, I mean, we're gonna share the full list in a moment after this one, but. Uh, so, all right, well, then let's get into it. So number six is cask 93.136, powerful. And this is a seven year Campbelltown at 58.4% from a first fill X urban barrel. Yeah, I think y'all know how much I enjoy the uh, <laughs> Woo. Oh, man. This is definitely, you can't enjoy this anywhere outdoors without like being by the ocean. You know, I'm just thinking like, a, like fishing. Big fishing for sure. Oh, by the way, definitely like a lot of seafood. Yeah. Like it's a lot. No, I mean, for me. I think it smells like a doctor's office. <laughs> <laughs> doctor's like, office by the ocean. <laughs> doctor's <laughs> office by the ocean. At sunset. <laughs> but also at the doctor's office. <laughs> yeah, it smells like a doctor's office. Like that kind of, I know we've had a few whiskeys in the past. Um, gosh, I'm trying to remember what the name of that last one was, but very like, like that medicinal, almost like beta beta dine like smell to it. So funny the name powerful. It, you know, I think when you think of the name powerful, I would think of like a really heavily peated whiskey, yeah. but it's not. It's lightly peated and it's intense, like really boldly flavored. But it really, it's sort of like there's a whisper of smoke. You know, it's not it's not too overpowering, but it, I guess powerful. I love a first fill bourbon barrel with, with, with Camel Town whiskey. Like I love the duality of that active cask 
bourbon wood, bright vanillas, and a bit of caramel. Got a little citrus with that sort of coastal peat. Oh, I just there's so much here. This this reminds me of a whiskey of the past almost. Like I get a lot of like bandage, like bandage, and mm -hmm. I'm getting that. I haven't said I haven't gotten that note in anything in a really long time. And it just is making me think of, gosh, what was that whiskey? It was like, it was like a hospital, something, a hospital or. Hospital juice? Help me out here. Huh? Hospital, hospital juice. juice. Yeah, you get yeah. that sort of like latex and iodine. Make like a very yeah. industrial. Yeah. Sure. I'm getting that in this. I haven't gotten that flavor note or that profile in a whiskey in a really long time. Yeah. But I'm I think getting that a lot here. You're getting a lot of that. Is it? Yeah. Ooh, I'm getting a bit of fruit too. Like there's a, sort of like a, a red berry fruit thing going on. Um, oh, but I love how things are sort of just sort of muted a little bit. I know it's powerful and that's a name and, and it certainly is. It's a look, it's near 60%. But I love that no one note is overpowering, you know, and so it all works sort of harmoniously. No. And it was full metal hospital. Oh, yeah. So we had two hospitals, Hospital Juice and Full yes. Metal Hospital. It was Full Metal Hospital. Like, I'm just getting, like, I don't know. That is, this is such, like, a breath of fresh air kind of whiskey just because I haven't had anything like this in such a long time. It's such a nice, like, I don't know. It's, like, a nice change of pace, this whiskey. Ooh. Band-Aids. <laughs> It's so it's so good. It, it, yeah. I'm just reflecting on sort of the last six that we've had. This is a uh, part of me. It's I'll just be guys to be fully honest. Like I I enjoy these so regularly. This is this style Campbelltown. A lot of from '93s have become a go-to over the years. And I'm almost like trying to not enjoy it as much as I am, just be, for that reason. But the reality is, if you like something, you like something. And there's a reason for it. That's kind of how, what yeah. I'm in this moment thinking. I'm like, well, there's, I shouldn't suppress my, you know, enjoyment of it just because it's <laughs> what I typically tend to go to. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, that's special. So look, I think what we're going to do now, we're, we're gonna sh let's share the whole list. We, we've tasted let's do it. Six. If you guys want to go back, if you didn't catch the first ones, you're welcome um, to kind of go back and look at those. But let's share the six. Let me, and let me see how. First of all, I can do this first. It's going to look like a, a nice little, I think. Get your cameras ready. Well, we can Screen pause it. So, so I'm just going to show this PDF. Can you guys all see this? Yeah. So this is, actually, it's two pages. This is most of them. So looking at these here, we've tasted some of these already. Um, can you see my cursor when I move it? Like, does it oh, it's so little. I can't light? really see much of it. Highlight. Okay. Well, anyway, so 1.222, you know, we have, we've seen a few ones lately, uh, which I'm pretty excited for. First fell bourbon barrel, though. Most of them actually recently have been sort of sherry casks. That's cool to see. Well, I don't know. What stands out at you here? There's some pretty exciting ones. Here. Um, yeah, there are a few. I'm pulling up mine as well. So um, that 53.325 is kind of, you know, oh, yeah. shaking. It's a, uh, you know finger at me like you need to come live with me in california <laughs> I, what, I don't know what you think. so yeah a peated isla in a madeira hogshead which will be pretty exciting kind of, I, I don't know that i've ever seen that from the yeah. society at least um i've never tasted that before so that is kind of the one that's kind of on my radar yeah and the the colder months are are coming so it's time to stock up on the good you know peat yeah and you like this 68.37 i love the name of rummage and dunnage you called that one out is i do like that but the other one that i am excited about is the 95.36 bodybuilders oh, and ball gowns because go down, go down here just to does that show up um, at the bottom here, 95 and 36. Oh, yeah, bodybuilders and ball yes. gowns. That's so funny. You love the 95s. I, I do. I do very much. So, 
And I love that name. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty wild. I, I it's would love to taste that one right now. Uh, so. 122.3, proper, proper peat party. Mm -hmm. Proper peat party in which bodybuilders wear ball gowns. But man, heavily peated, we haven't, we don't see those as often, the heavily peated. So no. that's pretty exciting. Um, then we have that 66, 167. Yeah, yeah, so, that's interesting because that's very similar to the I like big butts. I like big butts. Yeah, that was yeah. also same distillery, same cask, refill Olorosa Punch then. Yeah. So, so it's really if you guys have the I like big butts and you really like that, and, <laughs> and you're not gonna lie, then I think at that point this is this would be a really it would be a fun experiment to compare the two because of the same age, same cast, same distillery. It'd be a nice follow up. Yeah, and I feel like there's a lot of like pre-fall whiskeys, like a maple syrup mountain spring, sweet apple mm. chutney. They yeah. sound like they sound like the names of like candles. Like they could be candle names. <laughs> yeah, <they're good. laughs> right. Strangely soothing. Okay, I'm looking at all of these as candles now. Strangely soothing. <laughs> How do you know how to draw? Maple syrup mountains. So that's the one you said was. Uh, yeah, doesn't it sound like it would be like the name of a candle? <laughs> and this is seductive. Oh, this is one we just had here. Oh, that was so good too. Yeah, that one was pretty. One three, man. Um, so this is the list, you guys. Uh, you know, it's coming out tomorrow. We should mention too. Of course, we'll have our mid-month out turn uh, following up two weeks from tomorrow, and, and there will yes. be uh, a few casts there. Actually, it'll be a rather a big one this time. But this is a. Uh, what we're leading really sort of is our outdoor exploration this August with all of these. I'm excited. Yeah, I, I'm looking back at the ones we've had. They're all so different as they usually are. Super different. Yeah. I, do, I love the fact that some are so classical. You know, I just, and, and some are so different. You know, there's a classical Highland there, there's a classical Sherry Bomb. But then there's also a really unique American Oak Sherry Bomb that's like really young and big time. And uh, Danielle Duggar says that, that whole list looks good. You're killing me. <laughs> you know, not trying to kill anyone here, Daniel, but uh, we're just trying to sell candles. <laughs> <laughs> Fills your, your room with a lovely smell of sweet apple chutney. <laughs> Robbie says, are there any sets? Yes, Robbie, and I apologize we don't have those, but I, I will say that there will be uh, three different bundles of, of whiskeys coming out tomorrow. And actually they're all themed, to be honest, for, for different outdoor activities. So we've sort of grouped together, I'll, I know one of them will be sort of the more floral and fragrant whiskeys are all grouped together. Uh, we have a more sort of savory batch and I don't know, you'll see those tomorrow as well. And they're all pretty cool, but but just keeping the theme, we've, we've grouped them for different activities to sort of accompany us on a month that we really need to get outside for a little bit. So I'm talking about me. Will you so, scroll down again? Connor asked yeah. if you would scroll back down. Yeah. And then Joseph, to answer your question, there are a few bottles left from last drop. So if you want to give us a call, we can kind of go over what we have left. George George says the 122.3. Is that really the third cast? I've got 122.22 and 26. Um, I feel like that, I don't know, that can't be. That might be 0 0.30. Or, uh, let, me, let me look. Yeah, double check that. Just and I, my apologies, guys. I know just because when we copy this over from our spreadsheet, sometimes Excel drops zeros. It is one twenty two point three zero. Zero. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that was just a mistake. So that's one twenty two point three zero. So yeah, it's it's a follow up, but I know you're big on those, George. The one twenty two s, and I think some of those are just real, really unique standouts for sure. For sure. So. And that's the second page, right? The yeah, last it's little just three. Okay, three. perfect. So I could have filled it all into one, but I didn't. I wanted to make sure you guys can all see it. <laughs> so that's that's the list. I'm going to stop sharing. You guys can welcome, of course, to go back. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's it. I'm pretty stoked. And yeah. I don't know. Did I have any parting words? You guys, first of all, thanks for, I hope, I hope yeah. that you found this helpful. Of course, um, we did it a little earlier today too. Because I know it's tough sometimes finding the right time for everybody across different time zones in the U.S. But uh, but tomorrow at one o'clock, well, these will all be dropped, and 
Yep, some fun events coming up. I think this week. It's not not this week, rather this this whole month. It'll be yeah. Really this exciting. month we have some we have some good you know interviews, and we have you know some social media fun coming. So if you are not following us on Instagram or on Facebook, um, be sure to do that. We have some you know fun potential you know giveaways of sorts maybe or I don't know. There's All some right. there's there right. some surprises coming. So be sure you're following us on social media at SMWS America. A lot of surprises. A lot yeah. of with the I'm gonna go enjoy I think the rest of a few of these while finishing the day of work. So anyway, cheers. Yeah. Cheers.